we all have our stories whenever i go to my mom's place i don't get a cold but i get a cold when i go to my in-laws place or whenever my kid drinks milk he gets a cold or his cold gets worse is there any scientific truth behind these statements let's see in today's video hi friends i am dr karamat pediatrician and this channel is scientific doctor in this channel you get videos on health awareness myth busters and other medical science related information if you want to view such videos kindly consider subscribing in today's video we are going to see myths and facts regarding common cold first let us see the myths regarding what causes cold and what does not in my country india for example everybody has a theory regarding causation of cold water from some place or fruits causes cold cold foods causes cold or some people blame it on the season what are the scientific facts and why these myths came into existence we shall see one by one first of all we have to understand regarding causation there are three important factors one is a causal factor or a direct causation a virus causing cold or a typhoid bacteria causing typhoid the second is a predisposing factor a factor which enhances the susceptibility to a disease or in simple words which increases the chance of getting the disease third is aggravating factor which aggravates the pre-existing disease probably you may land up in complications the biggest myth in common cold causation is probably milk milk is traditionally believed to worsen the cold or sometimes even cause cold is there anything scientific behind this there have been numerous studies regarding milk and the cold and none have proved any causation or worsening in colds so why do people feel that milk aggravates cold probably when you drink milk there is a process called emulsification happening which may thicken the already existing mucus which is present in your throat which may give the feeling of the cold getting worse but the disease is not actually getting worse in fact hot drinks like a hot cup of milk because of the presence of steam and even the warmth may soothe your nerves and throat thereby having a sense of relief and comfort to the child so at any cost don't stop milk to your young children who are having cold the second myth why i want to address about is regarding the season people generally think that winter season you get more colds and it is true to an extent but is the season directly responsible for these colds now as we have already seen colds are caused by viruses then why do we have a sense that winter aggravates cold or winter produces colds during winter people tend to be close together increasing the chance of one to one transmission between the persons during extreme winter season your nasal secretions may go up and this may give rise to an idea of colds becoming worse during winter there is always seasonal incidence the viruses itself so some viruses are more during winter season and some more during summers and this may also give rise to a notion that the season itself causing cold but it is not so only the viruses but because of the increased number we think it is the season which is worsening regarding cold foods here i am not talking about which food is considered hot and which food is considered cold in traditional systems of medicine i am only talking about the physical cold objects like a cool drink or a water kept in the fridge the only scientific fact is whenever you drink an extremely cold object like a cool drink or a cold water your throat or the respiratory tract may get damaged and it may predispose to secondary attacks by cold viruses but in general as such the cold objects will not cause common cold what are the facts about fruits causing cold some people have the notion that citrus fruits like oranges and lemon may cause or aggravate cold and some others go to an extent of banning all fruits together in cold what are the scientific facts fruits in general and especially citrus fruits are high in nutrients like vitamin c 
which are essential in combating or fighting cold. So, it is not prudent. In fact, it may be harmful to stop fruits for the fear of getting cold. Very rarely, people also have the notion that by getting a bath, you may get a cold. This is never true. There is no scientific basis behind it. So, it is okay for people to have a bath while having cold. We have seen some myths regarding the causation of common cold. We will see what are the facts in the treatment of common cold. There are home remedies and there are over-the-counter medicines. In home remedies, honey given to more than a one-year-old children, it should not be given to infants. For more than one-year-old children, definitely is beneficial, especially in cough related to common cold. In Indian native medicines, we use ginger, tulsi, etc. in treating cold. Even though we don't have enough scientific backing to say that these treat cold, they may give some symptom relief. If generally not harmful, they can be taken. In western setups, they use echinacea as a relief for common cold. Studies regarding echinacea also differ on this. There are some studies which say there is some benefit while the others say there are no benefits. Regarding physical interventions to treat or prevent common cold, what is proven is improvement in personal hygiene and hand washing generally has a role in preventing common cold. Regarding other measures like gargling with hot water may give some relief for the symptoms of common cold so you may do it but it doesn't alter the course of the disease. Regarding over-the-counter medicines, what are the facts? Over-the-counter medicines, there are various combinations of medicines available. So we must know which component is there to know the effects on common cold. Probably one or two like antihistamines and decongestants may have a role in treating or relieving the symptoms of common cold. But for the fear of doing the wrong things or missing a serious disease, it is better to consult a doctor before taking any medicines. Do we have any medicine which can cause harm? Yes, in traditional system in India, they often use camphor as a direct application or as fumes inhalation. This might sometimes cause seizures or fits intractable in nature to a young child. So, especially in young children, it is better to avoid camphor or camphor containing preparations. Similarly, the vapor rubs, if it contains camphor, may cause harm as already mentioned. Also, vapor rubs work via their irritant nature. Because of the irritant nature, it may cause discomfort to the skin as well as to the nostrils. So, it is better to avoid these things. What about antibiotics and cold? As I already told, cold is a viral disease, not a bacterial disease. So, antibiotics strictly have no role in the treatment of common cold. However, a note of caution, what you consider as common cold might be really pneumonia or a sinus infection where your doctor will be prescribing the antibiotics. So, consider taking them only with doctor's prescription. This concludes today's short video on common cold myths and facts. I have released two more videos on common cold, the links of which are given in the description below. Kindly go through them and also share this video as well as my channel to your friends who also may get benefited from seeing this. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Also press the bell icon for instant notifications on new content. Thank you.